sometimes it might not even translate just how much we actually know what you're going through because it, it can get to, you know, it's just drowning uh, in a flood of emails and Google Classroom notifications and assignments that you all have to turn in all at once and you're having to do all this work, but you're getting little to no interaction. I know how monotonous that can get and how, you know, it, the, the, a lot of times your natural reaction is almost going to be just to kind of shut down. Um, and then when you get towards the end of the term and you see, oh, I, I got a 30 in chorus. Let me, let me see what I can do to bring that up. Um, <clears throat> obviously, I, the reason why I put the late work grace period in this year um, is for, for the reason of being in a pandemic, being at home and trying to be understanding because I know how difficult this can be. At the same time, on the other side of that coin, we have to we have to come to some sort of middle ground uh, on that. I I can't as much as I wish I could. Sometimes I can't do everything for you, and I, I'm not saying that you're asking me to. But by waiting until the very end, and this this applies to several people, um, not sorry, not several people in this class. I just mean several people across all, all of my classes. Um, when you wait until the very last minute to turn things in, it's a lot of stress, not just on teachers, but really on you guys too, because I know how, how stressful the end of the term can be when you're looking at power school and you're seeing that that grade's not where you want it to be. And then you're, you're waiting on teachers update grades and all that. That's normal. That's every year, regardless of pandemic, no pandemic. It gets even more difficult when it's all, all work that's being turned in at the, at the last minute. And what I don't want, last thing I would want is for me to make a mistake and miss something that you turned in because I have so many students turning in so much all at one time. So the easiest thing to do, and I know a lot of you guys already do this and have this down basically, but the easiest thing is to set up a daily routine when you're online, even when you're uh, when we're in person too. But setting up a routine to to figure out, you know, okay, I'm gonna wake up at whatever time. Um, so we, we can talk about what time y'all wake up. Oh, that's a whole separate conversation because I know some of y'all be getting up in the, the dusk. Um, but even, even with that, whatever, whenever you wake up, setting a time being like, okay, I'm going to check in attendance. I know a lot of you guys have been really good about doing that attendance, like first thing in the morning, um, looking for your assignments and, and trying to knock things out as they, as they start to pile up, because what you don't want is for them to pile up. And then you have a million things to do by Friday, rather than do this one little thing for course on Tuesday, um, work on Miss Monroe's math on, you know, whenever that's due, but don't try to wait until the very last minute. And I know I'm speaking to uh, high schoolers and telling y'all not to procrastinate. Sometimes it's like telling a fish not to, not to swim. Um, and this is me speaking as a former high school procrastinator. And by high school procrastinator, I mean a procrastinator who started procrastinating in high school and I'm 28 now. Um, we, it, you have to make that choice to be diligent and to be dedicated and uh, disciplined to get your work done on time because it just it it just adds to the stress that this year has already put on everybody and the last thing we need in 2020 is more stress okay so really really try this last term like i said there's not going to be as many assignments but really try to get your things in on time um for my sake but mostly for yours just just to just so that's something else you can check off the list that you don't have to worry about um, Speaking of that, you have a singing test that's due this Sunday. Obviously, you have until Sunday to do it. I'm not telling you to go rush and do it right now. But if you feel confident in Bottom of the River, you may as well go ahead and knock that out today if you have the time so that you don't have so that you're not, you know, chilling, relaxing uh, on Sunday. And then it's eight o'clock. You're like, oh, crap, I didn't do that Bottom of the River singing test. And you got a house full of loud people. Just go ahead and knock it out whenever you have the time to do it. Um, Mm, okay, so that, that brings us to this next term. Like I said, your videos, video submissions, audio submissions, those are going to be the biggest thing this semester. So uh, the video that I posted um, along with the, the Zoom link, uh, we're going we're gonna to touch on that and talk about that in just a second and kind of talk about how I want that to shape how you send me your videos uh, for this term. Uh, for our for our virtual choir when we get to the end of the semester because we, we are rolling and it, it's going to get here a lot faster than I think any of us are really ready for. Um, so really, really be um, 
be thinking about that. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna share my screen here in just a second, and uh, we're gonna kind of click through and watch a little bit of this this video that I asked you guys to to take a look at and be ready to talk about. Um, just un momento, por favor. Okay. Can you guys see? You're broken down and tired of living life on a merry-go-round. And you can't find the fighter, but I see it in you, so we go walk it out. And move mountains, we go walk it out. I'm gonna stop right there for just a second. So a uh, couple things that I noticed right off the bat watching her um, sing that solo and then the, the other student playing the, the keyboard. You, There's not gonna be, y'all not gonna have a video of me playing the keyboard um, along with any of the music. I don't, I don't know that that's fully necessary for, for our video. So that's, that's separate. But watching her and watching and listen to her sing one, you see that she's got her AirPod um, and, and she's singing with those. If you have AirPods and that's what you want to use, that is totally fine. It doesn't have to be headphones. It doesn't have to be um, the, the regular wired earbuds for Apple. Um, if you have AirPods and you want to use those, that is perfectly fine. Um, and one thing that I really like about this, this performance and watching her do that is she's got a really good um, musicianship that she's showing while she's singing. Like her facial expressions are interesting to watch. It's not just a dead person singing. You're broken down and tired. A little life on a merry-go-round. Because that can get rip. Thank you, Alyssa. Um, that can get really, really boring, really, really quickly um, to watch. I mean, just like just like any performance that we've ever done. And I, I talked to you guys about how visually it's just as important as the audio. Um, like. It, it's just as important to look good as it is to sound good when you're singing. And when I say look good, I mean visually and as a unit, do we look ready? Do we look professional? Are we engaged? And are we interesting and exciting to watch just as much as we're interesting and exciting to listen to? Because you guys have the sound. You guys sound really good um, almost immediately every year when we do this class. Um, in like the first week, you guys sound really good because you're all great singers. Um, we just have to also think about the fact that performing is not just about what it sounds like, but also how it looks and how the audience will end up feeling while they're watching you perform. And so watching her, you see that she is, you know, putting emotion into her, her sound and into her face as well. So watching for facial expressions, watching for performance. That's really what I'm looking for in these videos because the last thing I want, just like when we're doing this in person and we have, you know, our, our big old group up there, one of the first things we always talk about is it's you can always pick out the people who look bored or they look dead. Every time I give you guys a, a choir to watch or to analyze, one of the first things you guys tell me is they look bored or they don't, they look like they're dead. No one's face is moving. But then a lot of times when we're singing at our concerts, you can almost say the same thing about a lot of us too, because, and, and it's not, it's not that you are physically making a kind of face, but it's just, it's really easy to get caught up focusing on what it is that we have to do next. And I love y'all, but y'all's faces give you away, just like mine does. Y'all know my face makes all kinds of noise all the time, just looking at it. Y'all can see I make a whole lot of faces all day long, all the time. Um, and my face gives me away most of the time. You guys have that same um, that same trait. So we have to be um, what's the word? We have to be intentional about how we're how we're using our face, how we're moving, um, and how we're performing. Okay. So let's let's keep watching and be paying attention. I, I, obviously, I want you to listen to how they sound. Anything that you hear that you think is worth noting, please, you know. Uh, take a mental note of that, but also be paying attention to the visual performance as well. And I don't necessarily mean the video editing, I mean like the individual and group collective performances of the singers. And I'll rise up, I'll rise like the day, I'll rise up.
isn't quiet And it feels like it's getting hard to breathe And I know you feel like Not for just one second. So, um, I, I know I didn't, I didn't mean to actually stop, but this, this brings up something else I wanted to talk to you about really quick. Um, your concert attire, I, I still want us to be dressed as though we are performing in person. There will be a little bit more room for individuality and uh, uh, let's call it expression uh, this year because you're gonna be at home. If you don't have anything yet for the con like for your concert attire, I will go ahead and start trying to get that because I'm gonna ask you guys to start sending in videos pretty soon. Um, but I, and I bring it up now because while I'm going to have a, you know a little, there's going to be a little bit more room for um, you know it, accessorizing and changing up just a little bit. Like if you want to wear a black top or a dress, anything like that, that's fine. What she's got on right now is probably just a little bit too like the the straps on her for her shoulders a little bit too thin um for for any of you uh girls who were thinking about or anybody who's thinking about wearing uh like something with a strap like that just you know be be also thinking about the fact that even though we're virtual even though you're going to be at home this is still technically a, it's going to be a school performance and it's going to be going out to members of our school uh, school community so have that in mind when you're picking out your outfits i just wanted to say that and we'll listen to the rest of it Dying, but I promise we'll take the world to its feet and move mountains. We'll bring it to its feet and move mountains. How So that was that was uh, the uh, I'm trying to think Susan Wagner High School chorus. I don't know where where they're located, um, but that was that was from uh, yesterday. They posted this yesterday. Um, now I'm gonna give you guys a, a the the floor to if you know any comments, anything that you saw that you were like, oh, I really liked how this, or I really wish that this. You guys, you guys have the floor for that for a couple minutes, then we'll, we can we can move forward on that. Alyssa, you were go ahead because you, you had a lot going on on your face during that that whole. <laughs> I'm so sorry. This might be something, but sometimes it, just, it made me think of this. <laughs> you mean you want to be on the show, Grandpa? Yes. 
that made you feel that's what it sounded like oh man um, that's the thing that played in my head okay well that explains the the laughter that you had going on that the whole time um i wouldn't <laughs> quite classify it on that level uh but what so what specifically was it that made you think about that i think it was like some of their vows were a little wonky and um I think that's about it, and just like the, when they did like the, uh, I guess like runs and stuff, they didn't really like connect it, it just didn't like, I don't know, they didn't, they need to work a little bit on controlling, which is hard, so they did pretty good. But. I, I would agree with that, I think that there are a lot of the, what what that song was that, that we just watched was mostly solo driven. Like, and I mean, obviously the song Rise Up is a solo. So you saw in that, that arrangement, um, different from the one that we've done um, here, uh, where a lot of what is happening, people also because it was, ours was acapella and that was not. Um, but the, the solo is what was driving that song. And so you need really strong soloists to carry if you're going to rely on the soloist equipment. And, and I thought that uh, the soloist had really good voices, but like Alyssa said, uh, they, they need a little bit more control on some of those runs. Um, and the, the, vowel, the, the part that stood out to me as far as their vowels was at the very end when all three of the solos were doing the, for you, that, that part to me wasn't together. Um, and that's really, that is a very difficult ask to try to ask three separate soloists to sing the same run at the same time when they are not in the same room doing it. That's a very difficult ask to do. So bold on them to try that. Um, I think that uh, when they sing it in person, it may be a lot easier for them to, to put that together and then also to work on the vowels. Cause it's, it's again, it's tough to match vowels when you aren't hearing the entire group, um, which is uh, one of the reasons why I wanted you guys to specifically listen to that recording that I, that I saw this morning, um, to draw attention to that fact that your vowels and your diction articulation, all of those little things that we, we can tweak when we're together in class, um, that you, you, you hear the difference in, you know, when, I, when I'm like, oh, hold on, let's stop that, let's open up that vowel or whatever the case is, um, you find out that it's a lot more difficult to achieve that in a, in a group setting when we are not together. Like when you have to send individual videos in, you have to be thinking that much more about uh, your vowel placement, about your control, about your entrances and your cutoffs, all of those things. Um, so what that video didn't have um, that you guys will for uh, when we do our, our virtual um, choir video submissions, is I'm going to be I'm going to send you guys a video that will have the audio that I want you to listen to through your headphones. Um, but it'll also be a video of me conducting and giving you entrances and all that. So that uh, for a couple of reasons, one because it's a lot easier to um, to have a, a group sense of musicianship and performance when you have a, a constant. Uh, to to go off of and that concert will be the conductor uh, like normally in a concert you guys can feed off of my energy um, and vice versa because we're we're there together and you're you're following you know my hand motions whatever my facial expressions all that so you will have that to to go off of when you're recording your, your parts but the biggest reason why I want to have that video is so that we can enter and cut off at the same time um, so when I send it to you you'll have time to practice with that and get used to when I want you to, you know, hold on to the phrase and not take a breath, um, and especially when I want you to cut off because, uh, you, and you, I know you heard it in that video and then in a lot of other virtual choir videos, the, the cutoffs for long notes is very evident when it's not together, when it's a virtual performance because everybody has essentially the same balance in the, in the audio that you'll be able to hear. Um, so all of those things are going to be so, so, so crucial when, when we're doing them. Okay. Did anybody else have any comments or, or, um, anything that they wanted to, to talk about on that video? Nobody had any thoughts. 
Alyssa again. I just want to say, it's going to be complicated. It's going to sound like kind of like a ruckus on a video anyway. But yeah. Yeah. So that, that's, where, that's where my part comes in as far as trying to edit. So just to give you guys a brief little rundown of what the, the job is on the editing end of putting these videos together, when you guys submit your video, so I'll ask you to record yourselves, send in your video, and you'll just send in the video of you singing so you'll be able to see and hear you in your video. What I do then is I take all of the videos that you guys send, I rip the audio from them, I put that those individual audios into a um, digital uh, audio workstation or a DAW. Um, like I typically I use GarageBand just because it's easy and it's free for me. And then I, I edit the audio in there, blend it together, make sure it's all happening at the same time. I um, might add a couple little filters just to make it sound more like the full choir. And then I go into a video editing software and I put the videos all on the same, you know, little screen and time those up so that all of your mouths are moving at the same time, even though there's no sound in those videos because I've ripped the audio from them. And then I go back in, I put the audio to overdub that, make sure it's tied together. So there is, there are several different steps in the process to make it not sound like quite the ruckus that it would be if I just put y'all just all in one video and just let it go. Um, but that's where, that's where that will, will end up coming in. So that's why um, the cutoffs are going to be super important. Your interests are going to be super important because it's really tough to time it and put it all together in the same at the same time if we're not if we're not entering correctly. Like if you know according to whatever the tempo is, if you come in a beat a half a beat early, it that that stands out a lot. Okay, so that's why the the conducting video is going to be even that much more important. All right, um, what Alyssa, you have a face. You look about to say something else, or is that just Never mind. Okay. Um, anybody else before before we move to the the last little bit here? Okay. So um, now that you you've seen that you've seen kind of what it is that we're going for, what we're headed towards. Um, just we I know we've talked about this before about when you're sending in your videos for your singing tests. Um, this is like I said, it's going to be a little bit different than uh, the singing test videos because this is going to be something that we're using to collaborate and put together. So. Um, the, the first thing is you're gonna need, um, uh, you're probably gonna need two devices, but you'll definitely need headphones, um, earbuds, headphones, AirPods, whatever, um, as long as you can hear it and no one else can, that's all that we need. Um, it's, it, usually it helps me whenever I'm recording, if I'm using um, earbuds, uh, well, I guess earbuds or headphones, is just to have just one ear in uh, instead of both. So that way I can hear myself and I can hear the track uh, that's playing in here. And it's not super loud, but I can hear myself and make sure that I'm in tune with it. Because when I, when I try to put both of them in, a lot of times when you're singing and you have it loud enough to where you can sing and hear it playing, it'll, you, the sound of your voice, uh, your brain kind of distorts it a little bit from what the actual sound of your voice is to everybody else because your brain is trying to, to process the sound of your voice, which it hears from like inside your throat and chest to what your ears will hear bouncing off of wherever room you're in and the sound of what's playing in your ear. It's a lot for your brain to process all at one time. So my, my recommendation is to sing with just one earbud in. Obviously, if, it's, if that throws you off, you can use both. That's fine. Um, but just, just a suggestion for when you're doing that. Um, also, when you, when you are recording your video, um, like I said, you're going to have to have two devices, one so that you can hear and watch uh, the video that I send you of me conducting and one to record. Um, my assumption is that you're going to be recording with your phones or uh, with some sort of phone, uh, either yours or your parents' phones, whatever. Don't record it in portrait mode, record it in landscape. Uh, so that it's wider than it is tall. Uh, that's uh, for video editing purposes because when it's when I have different sides of videos, it gets very difficult to put those together on the same screen. Um, so make sure that it's it's uh, landscape mode. And I know y'all are pros at uh, all things uh, regarding like lighting and videography and angles and all that. So just make sure that you have good lighting so that I can see your face. Um, you know we don't need the the 85 year old. Uh, a man on Facebook profile picture angle, um, anything like that. Y'all know what I'm talking about when I say that. Um, <laughs> yeah, like that. Actually, I was thinking more of this, Adriana. Um, but either one of those is not not quite what we want. You want it to, you know, the camera should be at eye level. 
Um, and you, you know, about, about this far away from the camera is perfectly fine. Um, you don't, you don't want to be too close to it. And you get, and I mean, you can be further away. Um, perfect, Alyssa, that's exactly, actually um, tilt it up so that, you know, we don't look into your, into your nostrils. We don't want it, okay. Um, so you're, you're, you guys understand all of those angles, lighting, keep, make sure that it's, you know, pleasing to you and then to everybody else. Because remember, whatever you send me is what I'm gonna be able to use. I, I can only do so much, I'm not a magician, okay? Um, so um, make sure that you are as presentable as you want to be so that when other people see it, you don't get mad at me because I put your video that you sent me in the video. Because believe it or not, there have been people who have been upset with me uh, with how they were perceived or how they were presented when I had nothing to do with that. So um, remember, it's on you. Um, in the past, I've asked, like last year when I when we did the virtual choirs, I know I, I think I asked for you guys to all have just like a neutral background. So like record, like standing in front of a, a blank wall or something like that. I don't, the, the more I've actually seen of these, it doesn't distract me as much as I thought it would to have different backgrounds for different people. As long as it's not just like crazy in the background, um, you know, like don't don't like record like in front of, I don't know, I don't know if any of y'all live on a farm, but like don't record in front of all the barn animals or anything like that. But like, look, you know, have a decent looking background, make it sure that it's presentable. Um, but uh, it doesn't have to necessarily be just a neutral, plain background color. Like what, where you guys are for the most part now would be perfectly fine. Um, just make sure that it's, um, again, you have decent lighting. And the biggest thing is make sure that it's quiet in the background. Um, I had some people send me videos last year where I could hear like babies crying, grandma yelling in the background. Um, we that that I can't do anything with that because again I can only I rip the audio directly from that video. So if grandma's screaming at grandpa in the background, then that's gonna be in the recording and that just I don't I don't have any songs that have uh grandma solos in there. So let's let's try to keep the, the background uh sound quiet. You got I know I know how y'all operate. I know that you watch the video a million times to analyze every little detail before you even send it to me. Um, you know, to make sure that, you know, you don't have a hair out of place or make sure that your voice didn't crack. Or you could be like Lily and Lily's like, nah, I record it and I send it directly to you. I don't even watch it. Whatever. Um, just, I would, I would recommend watching it at least once first to make sure that it, that you are okay with it before you send it to me. Because when I get it, I'm going to assume that you are okay with what you sent me. Um, and if there's an issue with it that I see, then I will, I will contact you and let you know that you need to re-record it. Um, that has hardly ever happened yet um you know because y'all y'all are y'all know what you're doing um wait reasons that i would ever ask you to re-record it is if i can't hear you um or the audio is distorted or if something that you either that's in your video is not something that i feel would be like think of it like if administration were were showing this to the board would it be comfortable for them to watch it Think about that. If, it, if it's not, if you feel like it's a question, probably something that you want to take out, whether it's something you're wearing, something in the background, whatever the case is, you guys, I'll leave that up to your discretion to figure out what that is and what that is not. And if it becomes an issue, then I'll, I'll let you know about it. Um, so the, the first video that we're going to do is Bottom of the River. That's going to be the first um, video that we're going to try to put together. Um, I want to have that done sooner rather than later uh one because it's an easy song and two because right now i'm still planning on miss haynes and her dance students to collaborate with us on that and if they're going to record it um and do video too then we gotta have our part done as well so that they have something to dance to okay um and the next one will be Ile Belle Bon because that's the first one that we learned and then we'll go to <laughs> then we'll go to sing your way home um and uh by that time we, we also will have started on our christmas music as well um i gotta say this this two-week quarantine was not good timing on the part of us learning music because i it's it's a lot easier in my opinion to to teach and learn when we're together um in class in person i know not all of you guys are in person but even still it's a lot easier to teach the masses when we have uh people in person because then uh, it, we can we can at least kind of move forward at a somewhat regular pace. Um, so be be looking out this uh, between this week and next week 
because I'm going to be posting um, the your your next pieces of music to learn. So those of you guys who are in person already have copies of um, the next piece of music, World for Christmas, and um, we we haven't started learning it or anything, but you just have you have the physical copy in hand. Um, the the problem with with that one is I'm I'm just gonna have to send PDFs of those to the people who were online or those who did not get copies because I don't have I didn't buy that on JW Pepper, so I, I I can't make that available like I made the other music pieces of music available like they're on JW Pepper JW Pepper. So I'm gonna have to send those uh, to you guys um, individually. Um, all right, let me look at my checklist, make sure I didn't forget anything that I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, again, don't forget you have your singing test for the bottom of the river due on Sunday. Um, if you know it and feel good about it, go ahead and knock that out. You can send it in earlier. Just try not to send it in later unless you have a very legitimate reason. Um, and uh, make sure you're getting your, your clothes for or your attire for concert for concert attire. And if you have any questions or an, anything that you wanted to add to uh, what you're going to wear for your attire, you can uh, let me know and send send that to me. That's fine. Um, I know in the I know on the syllabus I said like no extravagant jewelry or um, you know anything to y'all y'all know what what's in the syllabus. You there are a little bit more room because we're at home um, to to do these. You can uh, kind of add to it. Uh, or take away from it. If you have anything that you want to add um, to that, like for for example, like for any of our Christmas any of our any of our Christmas songs, I might ask you guys instead of wearing your concert attire to dress in Christmas attire for that video, um, so that we can have just a little bit, you know, more. Since we're at home and we have a little bit more room to uh, be creative, I want to kind of give you guys that space to do that. Um, all right, do I have any sort of questions, comments, concerns related to class, not related to class, anything for the good of the people? Okay, all right, fair enough. Uh, well, I will let you guys go if there is nothing else. Um, hi, Adriana, just popped up out of nowhere. Um, and I will talk to you soon. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. Be safe, make good decisions. And uh, I will talk to you later. All right. Bye, everybody.